Coach, it, it, so we can't talk specifically about what's going on in recruiting, but as you told us a couple of weeks back, you guys are not done. What has been the landscape of recruiting as you seem to still be working on your roster? Well, we've been doing a bunch of these virtual – we spend all day on these virtual Zoom uh, recruiting recruiting calls and and, and, uh, and things like that. They've actually – you kind of get in a good rhythm with them. They've actually been pretty fun. Um, our my, my, my assistants have done a very good job of identifying, you know, kids that fit us and, and, and kids that fit what we're doing, uh, both trying to finish out this class but also – moving forward into 2021 and then we can start calling 2022s here in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been fun. We, you know, we, our, our folks have done a great job putting together our, our presentations and, and, uh, the virtual visits and housing and academic center and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's been, uh, it's been good, but we, uh, we spend quite a bit of time, uh, doing those, uh, every day but it's been uh, like i said it's been a, been a good experience it's been something different and yeah i think it's something that's going to continue to be used in recruiting it'll certainly not replace the in-person visit and the in-person uh you know facetime one-on-one but i think a lot of people are going to continue to do the zooms the kids like it the parents like it you can give them a lot of information uh that's a lot easier when you're looking at somebody through a computer screen than it is over the phone um and so i, I think there's a lot of uh a lot of positives, maybe uh, turning a negative situation into, into something that will be uh, positive as we as we move forward here. Uh, and, Coach, when when you look at how you're shaping this roster through recruiting, um, I want to ask you about a specific side of the ball. I want to ask about y'all's defensive scheme. We, we're talking to Hunt about this. But it looks like you're looking to make some adjustments and improvements. Can you tell the LSU basketball fans, like, schematically where your head is at and how you plan to improve defensively? Well, what did Hunt say? <laughs> <laughs> Hunt said, uh, Hunt said zone. that he yeah he said imagine he said that last year it seemed like y'all struggled to stop the guards that when he looked at it the guards did the most damage whether that was them finishing at the rim themselves or uh, them creating plays. Hunt's nice. We couldn't stop anybody. Guards, <laughs> big, it doesn't matter. But uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> the number one thing you can do to help your defense is, is get rim protection. And so, you know, we, we need some big guys yeah. and, um, you know, that's the number one thing you can do. And we were just, we're just small. We were who we were and it's my fault. But, uh, you know, the number one thing you can do is instead of teams shooting layups on you, if they're shooting them from six feet, a layup, they're going to make 70% of a six footer. They're going to make 40, 45% of. And so, wow. you know, you just, you, you can, you can decrease your percentages the further away they shoot. Uh, basically the defense, defense is, is, complicated but it's simple you want them to shoot the shot that they don't want to take mm-hmm. and so we let teams take way too many shots that were um you know within their system within what they wanted to do uh we were reacting to the offense a lot more than the offense was reacting to our defense where it's the inverse everybody's trying to react to our offense and how to stop us uh when we're on offense and so you know we're gonna we're gonna change our scheme. <laughs> we're gonna change uh, obviously some personnel, um, and and I think those two combinations will will help us become a, a, a very very good uh, defensive team. We've done it in the past. We've done it before. It's not like we've just been awful on defense. Uh, we haven't been great since we've been here, but in other places we've been pretty good on defense. And we're gonna go back to a uh, a philosophy that. Uh, fits a little bit better and, and, and is done uh, and, and that we've played at other places and, and, and we've, we've done it and been successful. Um, so it'll, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll be a little bit more uh, full court pressure, uh, actually quite a bit more full court pressure. It'll be quite a bit more of a, uh, you know, a matchup zone in the half court that switches back and forth between two or three different defenses uh, when we're in the half court. Uh, in one possession, so it, it'll be something that's uh, difficult to play against, something that's unique to the SEC. Nobody else in the league is really doing it, so it'll be something that huh. people haven't seen and, 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 and you know, will have to prepare for on a short short amount of time. But it is, you know, it's going to take us a while to put it in, and it's going to take us a while to install it, and, and you know, we're probably not going to be humming with it the first couple of weeks, you know, of the season because you've got a community. I mean, there's just a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to it, but. It's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very good defense. It's, it's something that we use particularly well at VCU and Chattanooga. 
uh, we were we were very good at it at both of those stops, and uh, we're going to um, kind of go with it here. And I, I think it'll it'll help us uh, help us be quite a bit better. And uh, you know, like I said, the the scheme's one thing, but but you know, <laughs> the personnel and 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 uh, the accountability of what we're going to do on defense is going to be totally different. Um, and, and I think that'll help as much as anything. Will Wade, LSU head basketball coach, joining us here off the bench, presented by All-Star Toyota, ESPN, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Alexandria. Your reaction to the news of student-athletes being able to return to campus in the next couple of weeks, what, what, what does that mean for you and your staff? Well, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of taking a wait-and-see approach to it. Right now, you know, everything's a voluntary um, workout as it is right now, and so th- they're supposed to re-vote on that. Uh, June 17th, I believe. So we can't really do any countable athletic-related activities. So our report date's not going to be till the end of June. We're at June 28th right now, around about June 28th right now, um, is our report date. Just because, um, you know, and I'm I'm not sure how much you know. A lot of our guys are all over the country right now working out. I mean, I got guys in Texas. I got guys, we got guys in Georgia. We got guys all over the place working out with trainers and stuff. If we bring them back here with, uh, you know, with, with with the policies and things that are in place, it's going to be very difficult for us to to work them out, and uh, we're not going to be able to certainly do anything as a coaching staff work them out. It basically, be four hours a week of strength training, and then what are they doing the rest of the time? So, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna push it back, and hopefully, we'll start back up when we're allowed countable athletic athletically related activities which means we can get on the court and coach them and work with them uh, and that sort of thing but we want to do it in the safest uh best way uh you know best way best way possible but we're we're certainly looking at an end of june uh start time right now and and so it's like you're already dealing with all this kind of unprecedented stuff looking to get back to playing but if recruiting ends um hopefully how recruiting will end here and this this roster takes shape um, you're looking at a team that could legitimately be like preseason top 10 in the country, top five. I know I asked you this even going into last year, I think, but it's probably going to be heightened this year. How do you get your team and your players ready to deal with that expectation, which sounds crazy given where the program was when you took it over? Well, I like your optimism, keep up. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm just going just what Jordy said yesterday. I'm, just, I'm rolling with oh, it. Oh, well, I appreciate y'all's optimism. Um, Coming from you. <laughs> you know, we've, uh, uh, you know, I've known to be a little brash sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I think I, I'm not worried about that. You know, we, yeah. we've just got to, you've got to get the best pieces you can get. And then we've got to do what we can do as a staff and me as the, as, as the leader and the head coach to put those guys in the best position to, to, to have success. And, you know, you look at it each year in terms of can you maximize what you've got, maximize the team that you maximize the team that you have, or wherever that may be, whatever that, you know. And I certainly think in your terms this next year if things break, right our ceiling is probably going to be the highest that it's been since we've been here mm. and probably the highest that it's been in a, in a, in a long long time yeah. um and so you know then the question becomes how do we maximize each of those pieces and each of those parts every day and so i feel like i don't want to get too much in the weeds on things but this time has also allowed us to you know you know we've been very good we came in you know, what first last year and tied for second or first two years ago tied for second this year. But, you know, there's some things we need to get better at and some things we needed to change. And so I actually the last five or six weeks, um, I've I've been doing Zoom calls every week with basically our, our high performance team, which is a, a group of members within my staff mm-hmm. that um, deal with our, our players on a daily basis and, and do mental and basketball and so there's a lot of different you know we're shifting to more of uh we're going to shift programmatically uh we're going to shift what we're doing what we're doing has been very good but it's not going to get us where we want to go and so to take the next step we've got to you know and some people it's like we're in one of the on one of the calls and they said coach you realize you're absolutely crazy you're the only person in the country that would do this after coming in first and second it's not like everything's broken but i feel like 
you know, if we keep plugging along and doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep kind of getting some of the same results and our ceiling's not as high. And so, you know, I've spent some time studying some NBA teams and how they operate and how they do things. And we just haven't been as efficient, haven't been where we need to be. And so um, I'm excited for when our guys do get back, when we do have the, you know, we're going to unveil a totally different structure and totally different um, way of, of, of doing things and going about our daily our daily habits and we're going to build better habits and we're going to have better uh, better checks and balances uh, across the board and so uh, I'm 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 actually really really excited about it I think it's going to be uh, unbelievably successful and I think we're way out in front of uh, of, of most folks uh, with this and so you know I've had great input from uh, Greg Golden my strength coach. Uh, Sean Eddy, our athletic trainer, has just been unbelievable. He's been around for a long time and has tremendous ideas. And then, you know, a lot of uh, our mental folks, Bruce Bugs, who works with our kids, and Joel Fish, who's our sports psychologist, and Greg Graber, yeah. who does our mindfulness. And, and then, you know, Bill Armstrong from my staff kind of handled some of the basketball pieces of it. But we, we've had, we've made a lot of progress. And I feel really, really good about where we're moving with that. And I think it's going to be a huge, huge advantage for our team and for our players and for our program. So I'm excited about that. And I think by doing that, I think it gives us the best chance to maximize the players and the talent that we have. ESPN has wow. tabbed him the best coach under 40 in the game. Will Wade joining us here on ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans and Alexandria. You mentioned the communication with your staff. What's the communication been like with your current team, specifically guys, like Wofford days who are out there seeking information and will have a decision ultimately to make. We talk and text every day. I was actually texting with Wadford and Javante and I texted days this morning before he gets up early. So I was texting him before I got on here. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, just stay in constant contact with them, stay in, stay in touch with where they are, what they're thinking, what can we do to help? Uh, you know, what can I do to help? What do you need from me? And, uh, you know, I give them updates. Hey, this is who I've talked to this week. This is what, this is what's going on. And so, um, you know, we just want to keep everybody informed and, and, and uh, help everybody make the, uh, make the, uh, make, make the right decision and the best decision for them in their future. The fan base has been jumping out of their skin, celebrating recruiting of late. Should they save any celebrations for future dates? Yeah, let's hope they uh, <laughs> let's hope we let's hope we can save a little bit for let's hope they got a little bit left in the tank for next week. Let's go. Oh yes, boot the f up. It's great to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. All, All right, day. coach. There he is, Will Wade, checking in.